All right, so these are the various pass-through devices out there. I'm sure you guys have maybe this one. Yeah, this is the most popular. If you notice, most of them look the same. That's because they are. <laughs> They're basically the same thing, All right? So this one's a, a modular pass-through device, which has J2534-1 and 2. It's basically two protocols that were added together so you could program on, on body chassis and drive. Make sure when you use a BMW, when you're trying to program a BMW, you have J2534-1 and 2 together. All of these have 1 and 2, all right? So you don't have to worry about that. This one, if you notice, it has a 1 here. This gets cut here, and you could buy this separately. So you want to make sure that you have both of them together if you have this one, all right? This thing right here, this comes in the Drew Tech, uh, they call it a BMW kit. They don't, they don't give you this with the passive device. You have to ask them for it. So if you're doing BMWs, you want to make sure you get this and this. This comes together, all right? Now, the purpose of this is that on earlier model, let's say like E46, E39, E53s, um, obviously the I, uh, I bus cars um, and K bus, those cars have a two pins at the OBD port, uh, pin seven and eight, and the pass-through device isn't engineered to make that distinction of what kind of car it's on. So it can't know, oh, it's a BMW, let me bridge these two pins together, okay? That's what that does. If you don't have this connected, you'll never get communication to the car, okay? I made a, a chart on what cars you need to put that on um, in the next slides over. Um, so basically all this does is just bridge pin seven and eight together so you get communications, okay? If you don't have that and you're, you're in a jam, it's Friday, you know, it's three o'clock at in the <laughs> you know, afternoon, customers yelling at you, you want the car. What you could do is just bridge them together. Yeah, sure. Just bridge them together, it'll work. All right, make sure it's in there good, you know, make sure it's not, <laughs> yeah, because you don't want this thing crashing, but it's possible, you could do it. All right, this is your regular 20-pin uh, connector for your older cars, uh, prior to five of 2000 production date. Um, you have to have this connected to this, and then that's connected to the passive device for it to work. So a lot of guys just connect this to the passive device and then they never get communication. But this also needs that connection through pin seven and eight to work, okay? And this is basically the connection diagram, kind of similar to what I showed you before. Um, it's very simple, you know. You know, PC has a USB cable with a little serial port here that connects right here. Um, on the, actually, on the back, actually. Um, this connects up front, the OBD cable, which connects to the car. It's very simple. Right? This is the chart I was talking about. Um, if you read it, you'll basically find out that, you know, let's pick one here. Let's say E93, right? So with a pass through device, an E93, does it need a 70 pin adapter? No, it doesn't because it's a most bus car. It's not an I bus car, right? Does it need a 20 or 16 pin? It needs a 16 pin, okay? So it's very simple, you know, if you don't really know to hook, you know, what you need to hook up to the car. Um, so E46, right? So that's an iBus car. So does it need a 70 pin adapter? Yes, right? Does it need a 20 pin or, or 16 pin? Depends, because <laughs> those cars were in that range that it moved from 20 pin to 16 pin. You always want to connect to the 20 pin under the hood, okay? whenever you're programming with those cars. It will never connect through the 16 pin. Um, then that's basically it. There's another page with more cars, mini Z cars. So basically the main thing is if it's an I bus or K bus car, most likely it's gonna need a 7, 8 pin adapter, okay? And it's, if, it's a, if it's near or below year 2000, look under the hood for the 20 pin connector, okay? And the main thing about that 20 pin um, any shops that use, uh, that do state inspections, um, if you don't put back that 20 pin cover and somebody takes it to the inspection machine to do an inspection, you'll never get communication over the 16 pin connector. So they'll come back to you saying, oh, I took it to the, 
you know, to the inspection station. They're telling me that I can't communicate to the car now. You know, meanwhile, why I took it to you, it was fine. You know, it's because that's not plugged in. All right, so just watch out for that. All right, so I hate this thing. This thing is horrible. <laughs> Do not buy that, okay? This one's good. This one's good, okay? This one has so many problems. I've, I've even seen cars crash because they're so unreliable. It's just, that's obviously why they revised it a couple of times. But um, usually you'll see this one now. This is the ICOM Next. So the main thing you want when you're buying an ICOM, you want an ICOM A, ICOM B, and ICOM C. This will do the 20 pin cars. This is for your most bus connection on uh, earlier most bus cars, E90, E65. Um, ISTA will prompt you for that connector if you don't hook it up. So it has to be, even though you're not programming on the most bus, it just wants to see those modules, okay? Um, and this is only for ICOM. Um, I just want to make, make sure that you guys know the J2534 device does not have a most bus connection, okay? And I get this question all the time. It's like, okay, so how do you program on the most bus? Number one, you don't want to program on the most bus. No. <laughs> all right? But, yeah. And if you have to, the problem is that the ICOM has that most bus connector that hooks up directly to the most bus service port, right? And it could program right through the, through the fiber optic, which is like 22 megabits per second. It's freaking insane, right? Pass-through device doesn't have that most bus connection, so when it connects to the OBD port, it connects to the, uh, after the OBD port, it goes to the gateway module, right? Through the KCAN to the head unit, which connects to the most bus ring, right? KCAN, <laughs> 500 kilobits per second at most, right? You'll be programming this thing for like a week, and then it's gonna crash at the end, so <laughs> I would not do it. Um, on those E-Series cars, the good part is that BMW lets you do selective programming, so you could remove the most bus components, and it's gonna ask you. We're gonna go through the list uh, a couple of slides after here, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But again, you do not wanna program on the most bus at all. If you, if you could avoid it, do it, all right? And this is your 20-pin connector. That's where it connects to. And this is the, the connector I was talking about. You want to make sure this is connected again. You want to plug it in and turn it when you're done programming. This is your most bus service for it. This is the E70. You have to kind of like put it together. It, doesn't, it, it comes like in an inline fashion when it's connected to the car. This is like the only car they do that on. It's freaking so stupid. And then you got to kind of put it together so it can make a, a port like this so it could connect to the ICOM B. Okay, you see that? Um, this is a mini. This one's jammed up like under the dash. Another stupid thing they did. You got to kind of dig for it. This is on the, under the dash on the right side, the center of the. Uh, this is where the JBE is, uh, the fuse box. And the JBE, I think, is up here somewhere. But you just got to dig up in there and you know, pick it out. Um, this is the ICOM setup, so it's a little more complicated than the pass-through device. So you have your PC, you have an Ethernet cable, goes to the router, Ethernet cable, which goes to the ICOM, USB to ICOM B, and then your OBD cable straight to the car. This is kind of how the dealer has it. Um, when they're programming, that's really how they do it. They have a jack on the, on the wall and that goes straight to the router and then that goes to the server after that. So it's basically, that's how they do it. Um, you could also hook it up a different way, which is this way. This is the way I usually do it. Um, the main thing here is you connect directly the ICOM to the PC. And if you notice, PCs usually have one port, right? <laughs> so how do you get across that, you know? So what you do is you get a USB to ethernet adapter Hook it up to USB, to the, to the tool or the PC. Ethernet to the router, okay? The reason I say that is because number one, Ethernet's always best. You, you always want to have it hardwired. 
If you could avoid it, just do it hardwired. You're gonna save yourself a lot of trouble. The next thing is on, in ISTA D, if you're trying to program, ISTA doesn't allow you to, to use Wi-Fi anymore. If you try to go into the programming section, it'll say Wi-Fi connection uh, selected. You have to change to wired. So it won't even let you program now if you don't have a wired connection. Okay. And this again, your firewall settings, just turn it off. <laughs> so you don't have to, this is just ridiculous. They expect you to do this. Just turn off your firewall. All right, so this is what I explained before, offline mode. It's not possible with OSS applications. So the aftermarket, you know, BMW ISTA install, you can't be offline. You have to be a, have a constant internet connection to use it. This is also what I was talking about with, if you're programming um, with a pass-through device, on the most bus, it's gonna take a very long time. And here I did the math. <laughs> um, this is on a uh, E series car, most bus. F series car is the one with a week. <laughs> this one is an E series car, so it's about 11 hours to program a head unit, just a head unit. And then it's gonna crash. <laughs> so you don't wanna do that. All right. So, um, ready to explain the J2534 1 and 2. You wanna make sure you have that device. That's compatible, so you want to uh, so you connect to a BMW. Um, this is very important here. With a J2534 device, BMW doesn't allow you to connect to these older cars, like E31 8 Series, E34 5 Series, and E36 318i. It just doesn't work. You have to use an ICOM to connect to those cars. But everything 96 and up should work, other than those cars. So you could connect to them to diagnose, you connect to program, 96 and up. OBD2 basically, right? All right, so this is pretty big too. When you're setting up your pass-through device, so you know, most guys install the driver from, the, from Jew Technologies, let's say for a Cardac Plus 2. Um, the problem here is that you have to activate the device before it works. If you don't do this, if you don't uh, activate it, then it won't work. It won't show up in your connection manager. It just won't turn on. You'll basically see a power light and that's it. Nothing will work. All right, so the way you get to here is when you install the driver, you have to look up what they call a J2534 toolbox. And then when you start that, it's gonna bring up this menu and say the device you know, isn't activated. You need to activate it. All right, so it's called J2534 toolbox.